before you get too far, be sure to check out the first part of our journey from Bomber. The link is in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back. It's the next day on our trip from Bamberg to Nuremberg and then back to Munich tonight. So today we're going to be out exploring Nuremberg. Last night we stayed at a Hampton Inn by Hilton and it was actually pretty nice here in Nuremberg. It's right next to the train station, which was super nice when we got off the train. I think it's like a 10 or 15 minute walk to the city center, but yeah. there's a lot of sites we're going to stop by on the way there. Yeah, and you guys can see our, our room here is... It's a it's a normal hotel room, normal for a Hampton. Although the breakfast was actually pretty good compared yeah. to the US breakfast that you get. So although it didn't compare it to the breakfast we had at the Hampton in France. So yeah. So if you're in Nuremberg, uh this is a good hotel to check out. There's mm -hmm. hotels all along this road by the Hauptbahnhof, mm -hmm. which is which is really nice. Yeah. After checking our bags at the hotel, we walked down the wide streets that led to the old town of Nuremberg. All along this corridor, we found several shops, restaurants, and little cafes. Eventually, we reached our first stop, St. Lawrence Church, or the Lawrence Kirche. This Gothic building is enormous, and it should definitely earn the designation as a cathedral rather than just a church. Construction on St. Lawrence began as early as the 13th century, but with several delays in funding and other construction issues, the main church was not completed until 1477. The building was mainly furnished by wealthy citizens of the town, who donated paintings and other works of art. This church has somewhat of an odd history, being one of the first Lutheran churches in Germany. The designs of this church are so intricate, and the stained glass windows and sculptures within are some of the most ornate that we've seen so far. After visiting the church, we made our way over to the building called the White Tower. This tower was originally part of the second defensive wall that surrounded the city, which is no longer standing. The tower actually used to be completely covered in white plaster, hence its name, the White Tower. This tower is a central part of a big square now in Nuremberg, which was very active the day that we were visiting. A lot of activity going on here today. There's so many quaint little squares and areas of the city, it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. This is the Pegnitz River, the river that flows through the middle of Nuremberg. The bridges and buildings crossing this river create an absolutely beautiful view. It's difficult to believe that the building on the left, the Henker House, actually used to serve as the residence of the city's executioner families. I guess even an executioner can appreciate how picturesque this view is. On the other side of the bridge, we can see the Schleierturm, a defensive wall that used to protect the outflow of the river. Our next stop, only a few blocks away, was the Cathedral of St. Sebald. Just like the other cathedrals we've seen, this one was extremely ornate. It had large vaulted ceilings, extraordinary statues, and beautiful artwork inside. The stained glass windows in this cathedral were some of the most colorful that we've seen. It was really a treat to walk through. One thing you need to do if you visit Nuremberg is visit the Albrecht Dürer house. Albrecht Dürer was a 16th century painter who once lived in this beautiful city, and many of his paintings showed scenes of the medieval Nuremberg. You can tour this house for only six euros a person. In the Dürer house square, we decided to stop for a drink and take in the view of the beautiful castle. We decided to stop for some beers and some sausages, right? outside the castle. How is it? It's delicious. <laughs> and you can't get over this view. So we're walking up to the castle and one thing we weren't told, you're going uphill a long time. Yeah. <laughs> 
The Nuremberg Castle, or Kaiserberg, is located on the far north side of the Old Town. It is believed that construction began on this castle around the year 1000. After being bombed during World War II, most of the castle was destroyed, but it was rebuilt in its historical form. We went on a tour of the castle and the small chapel inside. Here we saw several old weapons, pieces of armor, religious artifacts, and historical pieces. It was surreal to stand looking out the windows that nobles used to 500 years ago. Unfortunately, we can't show you the footage from inside on our tour. But you can take your own virtual tour of the castle, room by room, using the castle's website. A link is in the description down below. With this virtual tour, you can see pretty much everything that we saw, and you can also learn all about the castle without having to trek up the side of that huge hill. It's pretty neat up here, isn't it? Oh yeah, it was so cool. We found out in the museum that this inner courtyard used to be open to the public all the time. It still is. On this tour, you can also take an optional guided tour of the fountain house, which pumped water up into the castle, as well as the Sinvel Tour the really big tower. It only costs a few extra euros on your admission price, but you have to take a guided tour, and you cannot go on your own. So we just got done with our tour, and now we are walking around the gardens that are on the outside on top of the outer wall, and it's really cool here. These Nuremberg Gardens are really beautiful, so if you have the time, it's definitely worth walking around. We've even seen people like have little picnics up here, so definitely worth it. On our way down the hill, we decided to make a pit stop and have one more drink. It was such a beautiful day. Had to stop for another beer. We're here in the central square of Nuremberg. Yep, this is where the big Christmas market is every year, but now there's just all these little stands up to get vegetables and food and stuff. Yeah, it's a little little market. It's a Saturday, so it's pretty busy. The door was open on this church on the square, called the Frauenkirche, so we gave ourselves a little self-guided tour before finally heading off to the train station home. Hey guys, while well, we're at the train station here in Nuremberg, waiting to get back to München, we're waiting for the ice train, which is the really fast one, but it's about an hour and a half late, so, um, so much for the efficiency of the German rail system. Despite the several issues that we had with the trains, this was a great trip. We really enjoyed ourselves in both Bamberg and Nuremberg. We look forward to going to Nuremberg again for the Christmas markets in November. Thanks for joining us on this journey. See you next time.